Hello Mouses! Today I want to start by talking about the wonderful episode An Adventure in Space and Time that was on BBC last night which is on iPlayer now and I know that people abroad can still see iPlayer because there are various ways to unblock it so if you haven't seen it yet I recommend you see it it is an amazing docudrama about the first three years of the creation of Doctor Who. It stars David Bradley who you might know from previous episodes of Doctor Who and also from Harry Potter and he does the part of William Hartnell so effectively that there is now a lot of people saying, you know what, we should just recreate all of the missing episodes with the cast that they had in this production. I think that would be great. It would be incredibly expensive because these guys won't come cheap. But it would be incredibly great. So I would say, yeah, if you can do it and they're willing to work for next to nothing because that's how much you'll have to pay them, then sure, go with it. But I don't think it's going to happen. But the show was amazing. If you haven't seen it yet, Go and see it, it is fantastic, and I have to admit, I cried at the end, and I bet you will too. Sticking on the theme of Doctor Who, I'd like to just talk a little bit about this new Google Doodle that came out today. It's a great game, it's actually a full-fledged game that's in Google, and I recommend you give it a try. It took me just under 10 minutes to complete it, and I've made a Let's Play of that, so I'll put that up on my other channel, and I hope that you like that because it was good fun to make. But if you do have a chance to give it a try, then do, and see if you can beat my high score of 9 minutes 40 seconds. And if you do, do tell me, because that means I'll have to go back and try again. Anyway, let's move on to some interesting news. And we're going to talk about the Twitter phenomenon of the French weather girl, who decided that she would, because the French team had made it to the World Cup, then she would produce a weather report in the nude. The French term for in the nude is à poil. And there happens to be a place in France called Poil. So that's how the report starts off. And I, you could see it coming when you see the pictures that are on all the news reports. But it is actually a very well done piece. And I laughed so much. I have to applaud it. It's an amazing feat to be able to run around in the nude. And not die of frost because it's winter. I mean, yeah, sure. France has a bit of a warmer climate than Britain does. But even so, that's going to be cold. So I applaud her. And anyone else who wants to do it. A report in the nude. Go for it. It seems like it's worked out quite well for her. Hey Zoe, would you ever consider doing a video in the nude? No. Oh. Anyway, let's move on to our next story. It's one that is horrible. Three women have been kept in captivity in London for 30 years. This is just terrible. I, the people that did this are disgusting. I don't think anyone can say anything good about these people. There's, n there's no good to be coming of that. It's ridiculous. How, what kind of problems do you have to have in your head to want to keep someone as a slave? It's ridiculous. It, I thought we'd grown out of that as a species, never mind as a culture. My goodness. The level of psychosis that you must have to have to think that you have a right to hold someone else captive. These people need help. They need to be found and arrested, which is what happened. And then they need to be tried and convicted, which is what I hope is going to happen. And then they need to be assessed and worked out what has gone wrong in their heads. Because this isn't normal behaviour. I'm sorry, it's just not. I know that there's a lot of people out there in the BDSM community who love a bit of role playing and this sort of thing. And some of them want to go a bit further and take it to their lifestyle. Where it's consensual, I'm sure that's fine. But this wasn't consensual. This is ridiculous. And these people need to be looked at in the most serious way. Because they're mental. And I, and I don't want to say anything bad about people who have mental illness. But these people are dangerously mentally unstable. They've got something in their head that thinks it's okay to hold other people in hideous conditions. And it's not. And I hope that the victims of this get all of the support they need to try and put back together as much of their life as they can. Even though 30 years of it has been stolen by other people. And I really feel sorry for them. Because that's a large chunk of their life that is totally ruined. They're never going to get it back. And it's going to be this shadow over the rest of their existence. And I hope that they get the help that they need to pull themselves around to as much as they can. Okay, the final thing I want to talk about is this news that the science community has managed to compress everything that is needed about a man into two chromosomes in mice and still managed to reproduce other mice from these mice that have got basically man.zip in their gene code. 
It's amazing. This is an incredible step forward, not just because it allows a lot of science fiction writers to write a lot more books about what if we don't need men anymore, because that they're always interesting what-ifs, but also it means that men that don't have a working Y chromosome may one day be able to actually have children. And that's got to be a good thing, because sterility is horrible. As someone who can't have children themselves, I'd love to be able to have children. So I know what these people are going through when they find that they want to have kids and they've tried to have kids and they can't. So this is great. This is a fantastic step forward. It's not going to mean any new fertility treatments for humans for a long time because the chromosomes that have been found in mice don't have necessarily have the same chromosomes in humans. There isn't an equivalent between the species. We've got to work them out on our own in this new environment as well. So you take that and you go, right, what can we learn from that and apply to this? Because this one is very different. But they're going to get there, I can tell you that. And I hope that it works out well, because that's great. It also means that it could be potentially some fertility treatments for lesbian couples who want to have children between each other as well. Because if you can get all the information you need and replicate it from other information that's within the gene code of the uh, one of the mothers, then you can make a new Y chromosome and new sperm cells by creating that. And that would be very interesting. Again, long way off. We're talking decades at least. But it's a good one to try and work on because that's going to help a lot of people too. Okay, that's really all I've got time for today. So thank you very much for watching. If you did like this, remember to click the like button. Share it with your friends so that they can see what's been going on in the news as well. And do subscribe for future videos because there will be more in the future. But until next time, I've been Zoe Kerr Robinson. You've been watching The Knob Mouse Show. And I'll see you next time.